Hello, welcome to Info Hub. Here is what you need to know for Friday, June 29, 2018. Prime Minister and Region 9 Chairman Hale Rupununi is leading development in Guyana. Government extends helping hand to relatives of Suriname piracy attack. Ghana's economic standing is strong when compared with CARICOM countries, according to a CDB report. Foreign Affairs Ministry launches campaign to help you better understand the Ghana-Venezuela border issue, and we look at how a family of entrepreneurs is chipping into the food business. And now for the details. We begin with news that Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu has described Region 9 as one of Ghana's most dynamic areas. He made his observation at the second annual Regional Tushaus Conference in Latham. The second regional conference brought together Tushaus senior councillors and other village leaders representing the 57 indigenous villages in Region 9. Delivering the feature address was Prime Minister and Acting President Moses Nagamotu. He said that the groundwork is being set for Region 9 to become the most dynamic region in Guyana. $782 million had been allocated for this region, development region in presidential grants, in capital works, and in other activities. It's a large sum of money. The presidential grants alone for various projects come up to about $250 million, $243.6 million in the 19, 2018 budget. You have 57 villages Benefited, benefited from $57.8 million for certain projects. You have Been a Hill Institute benefited for Green Energy Development Center and for equipment and workshop and labs and for the development of tourism in Karasabai, $5 million. Aranaputa tractor and trailer all that we heard this morning in, would indicate that the groundwork is being created for the takeoff of this region into the most dynamic region in Guyana. Minister of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Sidney Alicock, told the newly elected leaders to be mindful of those who seek to stymie their development. We must guard against such exercise of personal ambitions, which seeks only to promote an individual while destroying the destiny of so many of us. We must guard against those who will attempt to inspire us to walk away from our accountability obligations. We must have a national to show us Council executive, which to a man or woman commits the transparency in its dealings, honoring all of its legal obligations and accounting for its stewardship in every respect. The event also saw some 16 villages receiving presidential grant totaling over $20 million to embark on green sustainable projects. From Latin Region 9 with senior videographer Tej Paul Bridge-Mohan, I am Sinika Thorne for InfoHub. The government today provided financial support to the families of the victims of that heinous piracy attack in Suriname's waters. Alexis Rodney has the details. Minister of Public Security Kemraj Ramjitan today presented the financial support to the next of kin of five fishermen who were either killed, injured or missing following the two piracy attacks in April and May in Suriname's waters. Minister Ramjitan said everyone is saddened over the deaths and the traumatic effects they have had on the family members. Indeed, a number of relatives did contact the ministry and also the commissioner of police Consequent upon the two attacks in Suriname's waters in which uh, so many people died and uh, indicated that they would need some financial help to at least do a couple of things. Missing fisherman Glenroy Jones was living in Suriname for the last four years. His father, Glendon Jones, received the monetary assistance of $100,000 for his two children who traveled to Suriname in search of him. The parents of injured fisherman Sherwin Lovell requested assistance to aid in his recovery. The wife of Captain Dionorine Guberdan 
received the money to assist in his medical treatment and for her and two daughters to return to Suriname. Wife of murdered fisherman Vicky Prasad requested money and social assistance for day-to-day -day living. Chandra Baron, mother of 40-year-old Sunil Ramata, requested money for the processing of a travel documents to travel to Suriname in search of her son. Wait, the was dad. Because I miss my son. In the easy, you got to pain your last, last your child, and a big, you know, easy. The only thing I hope that you can hear the voice back. That's the main thing, you know. On April 27, a piracy attack in Suriname's waters left 16 fishermen missing and feared dead. According to survivors, they were assaulted with machetes and forced to jump into the sea by the assailants. Minister Ramjitan said family members of other victims will receive their assistance at a later date. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Ghana's fight against trafficking in persons has seen it maintaining its Tier 1 status in the United States Department of State's TIP report for 2017. In this report, we tell you that Public Security Minister Kemraj Ramjitan has recommitted to the fight against the social ills. Here is Alexis Rodney. The recently released U.S. State Department's TIP report shows that Ghana has been making significant strides in the fight against trafficking in persons. Minister Ramjitan said that the increased efforts of the anti-TIP agencies helped with this success. In 2017, the task force, uh, led by this public security ministry, and also comprising representations from Ministry of Social Protection, Foreign Affairs, Indigenous People Affairs, Communities, Education, Geology and Mines Commission, the Police Force, Criminal Investigation Department, DPP, uh, Food for the Poor, Help and Shelter, Guyana Women Miners Organization, and Burn the Price Tag all played huge efforts. According to Minister Ramjitan, while the government is happy with Guyana's Tier 1 ranking, the report's recommendations were noted. In some of the mentioned areas, such as those pertaining to training, identification procedures and victim services outside the capital, improvement has already started. In, other, in others, such as with regard to an increase in the rate of conviction, there is much more to be done. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. The Foreign Ministry has launched a campaign to help you understand the Ghana-Venezuela border controversy issue. Stefan Gabriel tells us more. Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich said that this addresses the concern of ensuring the general public is more aware of the matter. It also seeks to bring more young people on board in the public awareness campaign. One of the cabinet's concerns has always been whether we are doing enough to ensure that the Guyanese public as a whole understands the issues surrounding the controversy. Minister Greenwich explained that TV programs, printed materials, films, popular personalities and even musicians are being used to highlight the matter. One of the things they were very concerned to address was that whilst in the, in the pre, uh, let us say, in, in the pre-1992 era, the bulk of the adults in this country would have been exposed to the story of uh, Guyana's controversy. They would have been studied it at school. They would have been in trade unions, in NGOs, and in other entities. It is the foreign minister's hope that by disseminating the information in simpler, more eye-catching format to as wide a geographic range as possible, citizens would be better able to understand the issue and know that Guyana stands unwavering on its position. For InfoHub, Stefan Gabriel. Thanks for staying with us. The Jamaican, Antiguan and Trinidadian economies are experiencing stress. Barbados has been in so much trouble that they recently called on the IMF to help. But Guyana is on a different trajectory and is showing strong signs of stability. According to a Caribbean Development Bank economic review, Guyana has the lowest debt to gross domestic product ratio in the Caribbean. Details from Stacey Carmichael. 
The 2016 report indicates that Guyana's debt level of 45.2% in 2017 and 46.4% in 2016 was a reduction from 48.6% in 2015. This is a significant achievement for Guyana's economy when compared to other countries in the region. Some CARICOM countries are not doing so well financially. Statistics show that Barbados had a debt-to-GDP ratio of 145% in 2016, Jamaica 120%, Antigua 93%, and Grenada 89%. These debt levels are dangerously high. In the case of Barbados, it has meant severe cost-cutting measures by the government and a move to the International Monetary Fund for assistance. On Monday, Finance Minister Winston Jordan assured that the economy remains sound and the country's external debt levels are still below 50% of the country's GDP. This is a key indicator of a country's financial health. It's still below 50% of GDP, so not to bother. The international um, threshold for hippie type countries is 60% of GDP. So don't even bother with any uh, propaganda that you're hearing. For Guyana, the current debt-to-GDP ratio is manageable, and Minister Jordan has also noted that debt should be viewed in relative terms and not absolute, noting that as the economy continues to grow, it can take on more debt. Guyana's GDP will rise this year by 3.6%, and with first oil, the IMF forecasts Guyana's GDP to increase by 38.5% in 2020, with a significant increase in official reserves and a gradual decline of the public debt-to-GDP ratio. For InfoHub, Stacey Carmichael. For the past 18 years, one family's main income started by just pushing a cart and selling local planting chips in the streets of Georgetown. Couple Gordon and Deborah Moore developed their DNG Delicious Chips business as a means of sustaining their family's livelihood. The Moores explained the business started in 2000 with four persons. Today, over seven persons are employed. With a fixture at the Border Market Region Street location for the past 10 years, owner Gordon Moore said the business offers a variety of products like planting chips, cassava chip, nuts, and chicken foot, among others. When there is like folk festival, you know, like mashing money. When there's a major holidays, right? The sales pick up, step up. Well, when it's, not, when it's normal, it's, you know, you still get the sales up, but not to how you get it when people here and they're going back. You know what I mean? Like Christmas time and these things. With over 1,000 sales on a weekly basis, there are plans to enhance the packaging and branding. New to the business, daughter Daniel Moore shares her experience. It's been a great experience. I've been here for about three years now, and so far I like it. Alia Pompey and Brian Fox have been supporting the business as customers for decades. This is actually a very nice initiative, actually, because persons cannot come out and just passing by, and you feel like having a little nick snacks, you can come here and get it. She's always out here since small I've been buying from her. I buy a lot from it um send away to my family and so I every day I enjoy the channel and the coconut biscuit and so the Moore's family intend to continue expanding the business to maintain their legacy in the local chips business. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. And here's our final report. Track and field fans are encouraged to come out and witness Kirani James, Troy Doris, Winston George and Donald Scott, among other well-known athletes, as they compete in the third Allian Pompey Invitational tomorrow. The most anticipated track and field event for Guyana will see the 400-meter Olympic gold medalist Kirani James, among other world-class athletes, gracing the Leonora Track and Field Center. James will compete in a much-anticipated 400-meter race and is calling on fans to come out and support the meet. It's excited to compete, um, to really just kind of see the crowd, the fans, everybody, and kind of learn a bit more about Guy Guyanese culture and, and everything like that. So um, I hope everyone you know, uh, comes, comes out to the meet and support all of our athletes because we're really going to need your support out there. So, And I know uh, for sure, as long as you're out there, it's guaranteed that we're going to put on a good show for, for, for all of you. Guyana's 400-meter Olympian and South American senior championship gold medalist Winston George said he's looking forward to the state competition. It's going to be a tough race. Um, I'm out here. I'm willing. I'm ready. I'm looking forward to a good race. It's not just Karani, but I also have some other good 400 runners in here. So 
um, looking to drop this national record, get into that 44, you know, and be happy. Feature athletes for the triple jump event, Guyana's Troy Doris and Donna Scott of the U.S., are both looking forward to putting on a show for the fans. I just can't wait to compete against Troy in his hometown. Um, um, you got Lee Van and Christian, so um, it's going to be a good, a good comp and I'm ready for it. So just go out there and have a good time. And Donald said it perfect. I mean, I'm just glad to be home and compete in front of the home crowd. So all the support is needed for everybody that's watching this right now. Come through the meet, have fun, enjoy yourself, and just have a good time. The Ali and Pompey Invitational goes down tomorrow at the Leonora Track and Field Center, where over 100 athletes representing 25 countries will be competing. Gates open at 3 p.m. and admission is $1,000. Isaiah Braffitt for InfoHub. Here now are your bridge and weather reports. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.